Today's class is about expository preaching. What is expository preaching? Why should you practice it? What constitutes an expository sermon? These are the few things that we are going to learn today. Expository preaching begins with a commitment to preach the text. This commitment is rooted in the Bible's self-attestation that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Exposition is the process of taking the results of our exegetical study and fashioning it for understanding, shaping a message in such a way that the people can understand the biblical truth for themselves, and then recognize how it applies to their own lives. So the task of the preacher is to analyze and understand the meaning and purpose of the biblical text so that he can do the task of translation that means shaping a message that helps the listener understand the essential truth in that text and how that truth impacts his or her life expository preaching builds on exegesis but it must be far more than simply the oral presentation of the results of our exegetical study. It must explain and illustrate biblical truth as it applies to our lives. Alistair Begg defines expository preaching like this. Unfolding the text of scripture in such a way that it makes contact with the listener's world while exalting Christ and confronting them with the need for action. Another scholar called Haddon Robinson defines expository preaching like this. The communication of a biblical concept derived from and transmitted through a historical, grammatical and literary study of a passage in its context, which the Holy Spirit applies to the personality and experience of the preacher, then through him to the hearers. Another scholar called Byron Chapel, he says, Expository preaching has occurred when the main idea of the sermon, the topic, the divisions of the idea, the main points, and the development of those divisions or the subpoints, all came from truths the text itself contains. No significant portion of the text is ignored. In other words, expositors willingly stay within the boundaries of a text and its relevant context and do not leave until they have surveyed its entirety with their listeners. So there are different stages in preparing an expository sermon. We'll go through that one by one. The first step is choose the text. Ideally, preach through a book. Look for one idea as presented in the text. Consider the natural breaks by genre. We have already studied about different biblical genre. I hope that will help us to understand each type of genre. The second stage is study the text. We have to read, reread, and reread the text. So that means read it many times. First for yourself, then for your sermon preparation. Remember, a text cannot mean to us what it never meant to them at that time. Develop a preliminary subject and complement, as we studied last time. So how do we exegete the text? Identify the content and the context. When you think about content, you got to also think about grammar and syntax and the word meanings. When you think about the context, we have to look at the historical and literary context of the text. The third step is find the exegetical big idea. What did the author intend to say to his original audience there and then? Remember, a text cannot mean to us what it never meant to them. So it is so important. It may, I may be repeating it same, several times because it is so important. We have to understand what the text meant to them at that time. Determine the subject and complement. Subject is, 
what is the author talking about? And the compliment is, what is the author saying about the subject? For example, in the parable of the lost coin, the subject is, how does God view sinners? The subject is often stated as a question. Compliment here is, he diligently pursues them so that they will return to him, a return which he welcomes and celebrates. Another example is Ephesians 1, 3 to 10. The subject here is, why should we exalt God? The compliment here is, because he gives us every spiritual blessing in Christ. So the big idea is, we should exalt God because he gives us every spiritual blessing in Christ. The big idea is often a simple restatement of the subject and the compliment. Another example is Acts chapter 9, 1 to 19. It's about Paul's conversion. The subject is, how and why did Saul become a Christian? The compliment is, because Jesus opened his eyes to the truth to become his chosen messenger to the Gentiles. And the big idea is, Saul became a Christian because Jesus chose him as his messenger to the Gentiles. Thus he opened his eyes to the truth. The fourth step is, bounce the big idea of your audience. Scholars call it as exegeting your audience. Or in simple terms, how will my audience receive this big idea? What does it mean? That is explanation. Is it true? Is it validation? So what does it mean for me? That is implication. Your sermon is not to whomever it may concern. Your sermon is to a targeted audience. You should be able to consider and understand is your big idea exegetically is local or cultural? Or is it universal or theological? If it is more local or cultural, we have to understand to what extent does the biblical circumstance mirror your audience's circumstance? Or how is it related? Is there any relatable circumstances in our audience to the cultural circumstance of the audience to whom it was originally written? If it is more local or cultural, then what is the principle being taught in this passage? This is very important for us to understand because there are so many letters especially the epistles have, are addressing local or cultural issues we may not have the exact circumstance right now with our audience but then we have to identify what is the principle that is being taught in that passage then we should think how does the principle in the big idea exegetically help reshape your audience's world the next step is determine the homiletical big idea. In light of your audience's worldview, knowledge, experience and circumstances, think through your big idea exegetical and state it in the most exact memorable sentence possible. Now, the big idea homiletical remains anchored in the big idea exegetical. We can't change it. The principle has to remain the same. Or the point made by the author to the original hearers must be the same. But how it is applied today is different. Develop the there and then of the big idea exegetical into here and now of the big idea formulating. Often stated it as a command. For example, in Luke 15, the parable of the lost coin or lost sheep or lost son. You can run, but you cannot hide from repentance. Next step is determine the purpose of your sermon. If the big idea of homiletical is the arrow, then the purpose is the target you wish to hit. So that means you have to secure some moral action in a measurable way from the audience. Example of a sermon's purpose. Each member should be able to define selfishness for himself and perform one selfless act for a neighbor this week or it can be each member should understand the reason for the incarnation and teach its meaning to their family 
during christmas time or it can be each member should fast and pray for unity this week these are the moral action that has be expected from the listeners in a measurable way so the purpose of the sermon should not be vague the purpose is to expect the audience to respond to the scripture in real action so in other words the whole preaching is about calling the audience for repentance change of mind that leads to change of action so in order to determine the purpose of your sermon we have to understand the current mindset of our audience then according to the scripture that you are preaching at that day you have to see how the target mindset should be for example if the current mindset is worldliness and living by flesh the target mindset should be spirituality or if the current mindset is sensualism the target mindset should be self control or the target mindset should be pleasures in pleasing god if the current mindset is self centeredness the target mindset should be servanthood if the current mindset is tolerance the target mindset should be truth the current mindset is autonomy or individualism the target mindset should be a submission to community if the current mindset is consumerism the target mindset should be contribution if the current mindset is fear the target mindset should be faith if the current mindset is apathy the target mindset should be zealous love the next step is determine the style of your sermon there are different styles of sermons one is deductive you can do that with epistles law proverbs another one is inductive this is more used with narratives and parables and hybrid inductive to deductive or it is subject complement or it can be narrative in deductive style you state the proposition or big idea homiletical up front in your introduction then prove it via your points and restate in your conclusion works well with the genre of the scripture especially with the epistles this is our default style for most sermons we start with a topic or a title that really explains the big idea formality if you have three points in the sermon and you don't have to stick to three points be sure that each of these three points are derived from the big idea formality inductive style is where you wait to state the proposition or big idea homiletical as a dramatical conclusion to your earlier points begin by describing a problem or dilemma which needs a solution via introduction build on this situational analysis by describing various consequences of the problem or dilemma and create more tension pay careful attention to your transitional statements so that you don't lose your audience on this journey offer alternative solutions in your proceeding points but point out their shortcomings finally offer the real biblical solution as your final proposition or big idea formulate the next one is hybrid style this style begins inductively introduces a proposition then continues deductively to the conclusion begin by describing a problem or dilemma which needs a solution via the introduction build on this situational analysis by describing various consequences of the problem or dilemma and create more tension offer the real biblical solution earlier after a well developed introduction or after your first point as your proposition or big idea homiletical by introducing the big idea homiletical earlier you can now reinforce it via supporting arguments in the remaining major points of the sermon 